Okay, our first speaker. Our hearts go out to him. He is, he is currently joyfully underemployed after years of bashing his head against walls as editor and then eventually the publisher of the now defunct Fast Forward Weekly. Please welcome Drew Anderson. There's a lot of you. So until recently, I was the man in charge of a well-read paper in Calgary, which some of you might recognize. It was a scrappy and underfunded beast that tried to punch above its weight and got into trouble as often as possible in order to do so. It wasn't perfect, but never professed to be, and it ran for almost 20 years before the owners, Great West Newspapers, decided to shut it down one afternoon. I entered the world of journalism just before the bottom fell out. I was lucky. I landed a job at Fast Forward Weekly as the Arts and Lifestyle Editor, right around the time work dried up. It would be my home for almost a decade as I worked up to editor and then the dual role of editor and publisher. It allowed me a freedom that I might never again experience in my field. To say that the industry I love is in a jam would be an understatement. In Canada, paper closures, cutbacks, and layoffs are things we're confronted with regularly. Revenue is drying up, concentration of ownership is increasing, and free blogs and publications are eating into the ability of journalists to make a living. Journalism, and therefore society, is under threat. This isn't just a lament for my career options. This is a fundamental issue facing our democracy. I firmly believe that the ultimate role of journalism is to speak truth to power, or at least give you an honest restaurant review. It has, always has and always will require determined voices to watch over the political process as well as the menus and theater productions. We have seen newspapers close, and those which remain have shrunk in size and lost countless jobs. The once thriving newsroom of the Calgary Herald is now just a shadow of its former self. It now shares ownership with the Sun, owners who dictate political endorsements from Toronto and who control the majority of daily print publications in the country. This should concern you. Post Media is owned by an American hedge fund that's only interested in recovering its investments. It's shoveling money into debt repayment above all else. Some say not to worry about concentration in traditional media thanks to the internet but it's hard to see which online outlets are producing relative, relevant and high quality work covering the local market. Things aren't any better elsewhere. The CBC, which has long bound this disparate country together, has been slashed repeatedly. Those in charge are conservative patronage placements beholden to a government which has proven time and time again to be openly hostile to information, accountability, debate, and therefore journalism. And that's the rub. We need, good, or we need investment in good journalism and good journalists because there are still good journalists doing great work. At the local level, there's Dom Braid's insight into provincial politics or the often damning investigative articles by Matt McClure, just to name two. There are promising things happening with newer online outlets like the National Observer and the TIE as well. This kind of work and the emergence of new online platforms is cause for cautious optimism. We're in a time of great flux, with every media outlet essentially throwing darts and seeing what sticks. What will work? What do young readers want? They certainly aren't going to decide to return to stacks of paper for yesterday's news. There is no single solution, and there's great diversity in what people want. Some just want a couple of quick sentences giving the broad strokes of a story. Others want to sing into a long investigation that dives into every corner. Sometimes the same person wants both of those things at different times, Video, audio, slideshows, sure. Kittens, always. <laughs> What's really needed in order to get us out of this jam are new ways of making money. Revenues have contracted at an alarming rate. That was certainly the case at Fast Forward, and it's reflected in the reduced page counts of numerous newspapers and magazines. Everyone is rushing online, but those ad dollars don't bring in the same amount. The margins are too tight. We've seen experimentation, but it's not without concerns. We've entered a world uh, where the line between advertising and journalism is blurred beyond most people's ability to distinguish it. It destroys the credibility of the profession when we have magazines that are nothing more than a front for businesses or friends or even boyfriends to ply their wares. There's room for this kind of thing, but it's a delicate balance. There are other funding methods. The Walrus is funded through a foundation, but is limited by that status and what it can write. The TIE happens to have rich people willing to support them. There are sponsorships, which can be problematic, like CAP's sponsorship of post-media energy reporting. There's readers' contributions, crowdfunding paywalls, and more. 
I've thought a lot about these issues in the lead up to Fast Forward's closure and after. It was clear a forthright free weekly relying on ad dollars wasn't viable anymore. Why buy an ad in a paper that runs honest restaurant reviews when that other publication pushes nothing but positive? Our readers loved us for our honesty, but those with ad dollars for the most part did not. Certainly not the oil companies. I think there has to be a combination of ideas for something that commits itself to saying what it means and doing so despite the financial repercussions to work. There has to be a blend of all of the elements I mentioned in order for something to survive. If it isn't working, a publication has to be nimble enough to change almost immediately. Because we need journalism in Canada. We are currently faced with an Orwellian government that believes the way to achieve its goals does, is to simply lie, knowing full well that if you repeat something ad nauseum, it'll stick. Making it harder for people to vote? Call it the Fair Elections Act. Simply repeat speaking points over and over and avoid answering any questions. It might seem dramatic, but this is a dangerous time for our young country. Apathy and dismay rightly spring from a sense of helplessness in the face of such governmental cynicism. Humanity has never faced greater threats than it does now, primarily from climate change and its related horrors. Our leaders have chosen to ignore those problems. We need people talking about these issues and bringing them to the forefront of public debate. We need an independent and wiry media to expose hidden governmental activities. We also need voices that disagree on these matters within media. We need diversity. We need journalists combing through FOIP requests in order to find out who those purporting to represent us actually represent. Journalism is in a jam, but we can either lament the loss and look towards a bleak future where information is constrained and controlled, or we can view this as an opportunity for a resurgence in strong voices that shake the foundations of power in this country and beyond, that hold mayors and premiers and prime ministers to account. It won't be an easy road, but it's one that is fundamental to our future. It's one that will require each and every person in this room to commit to helping nurture a new wave of Canadian journalism and to offer a few bucks at the very least to your favorite publications, as well as to read beyond the narrow scope of your own interests. We're all in this jam, and it'll take all of us to get out of it. Thank you, Drew.